TV light. <laughs> it's kind of fun, is that uh, the last few days I've been watching my work, so to speak, in the ministry kind of like go to pieces <laughs> in some positive ways. I was uh, used to writing about, oh, I don't know, probably 30, posting at least 30 to 40 articles uh, per day. And then I added emotional, you know, God said, you know, to share these and to develop them for my own personal devotional time, but also for the sake of ministry in the sense that once they're recorded, a year's worth, you know, there's 365 days, and they could be used for, in the future, you know, the launching of what, you know, I believe was from after 2012 onward, you know, the time we should be looking for really, in a very real way, the soon return of Jesus, and that it could happen any time after that, you know, and so part of starting the Biblical Christian Network was to build upon the foundation that was laid of my technical basis and my experience in God and share Jesus from that moment on. Well, it's a good idea. <laughs> the practical reality is it's a lot of work. <laughs> so the fun thing was that I was in the bathtub the other day and I was talking to the Lord about it and saying, you know, God, I'm just not getting it, you know, I'm, I don't have this organized, you know, quite right. So I said, you know, I'm, I just got done recording, you know, the devotionals and, you know, I, I don't feel like you want me to do this and you don't want me to do that. He says, I said, so what do you want me to do? And the Lord spoke to me, you know, and he says, uh, I want you to take a day of rest. <laughs> I was like, no! <laughs> wrong answer <laughs> no way I got too much to do every day and, uh, of course the way to do that is you record ahead of time which is what we do on one day you know and now God has kind of told me to take a day of rest which means that I really have to put it together and get organized to get ahead even more <laughs> so here we go you know it's like it's interesting to put into place what God says to do, you know, and then as you do it, you'll find that you have the time. When you don't think you have the time, <laughs> you'll go nuts trying to figure out how. In daily light, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. We are all as an unclean thing. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is, which is of God by faith. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. The fine linen is the righteousness of saints. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. People forget sometimes, I think, that salvation isn't our choice to be saved so much as it is God's prerogative to inspire us to accept his salvation he's given to us and that when we do we find that God has a purpose a plan and a design for us to live out in our life and that design and that purpose isn't just for ourselves but it's for others it's to bring as Jesus said many sons and daughters into the kingdom of God and when you think about it, it only makes sense because if you knew that there was a fire in the building, do you run out and save yourself? 
or do you look around and tell others that the building's on fire? The day shall declare it. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. Then shall every man have praise of God. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Or what dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more. God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. The Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name, great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You know, I recently had a challenge in the sense of reminding Christians that this unpopular court decision that had happened in our country was probably God testing our knowledge to see if we recognize that God is in control, that even as the, the devotional says, judge nothing before it's time. You know, we should not be judging. We should not be making these decisions and then reacting to the decisions that are made because God will bring it to light in his time. Whether an unpopular decision that you see in society or whether a personal decision that's going on in your life, God takes care of it if you turn it to him and leave it there in prayer. You don't have to react. You don't have to act for God. God takes care of it. And I think that's the hardest thing to communicate to people who already know that but don't act like it, is that God really is personal. God is personal. God is involved. God is moving. God is doing. And that's the one thing that I, I just... I'm amazed how often people don't accept the fact that a living God means he's alive and that he is real. Jesus made it very adamant and clear. As the Son of Man, as the Son of God, he came and revealed the Father. As he did in his life, always seeing the Father doing these things, he told us that is what God is doing. So in our life, we should... And we must learn to recognize it is God working. He is in control. It is not some circumstance or happenstance that we just sit, sit, sit back and apply some religious band-aid to. No, it's a personal relationship that we know by what we see and what we hear that God has brought us to this place and that he knows what he would have you to do today if you will seek him if you will listen, and if you will do as he has chosen to teach you how to do, and what to do, and where to go, and how to be. It doesn't get any more simple. It's just simply doing what he says to do each day by asking him. Have you asked God today? Maybe now's the time. <laughs>